single stage to orbit, holy grail of real life rocketry and pretty normal thing to do in Kerbal Space Program. What can be even better? Well, spinning station with artificial gravity. Today in this video I would be creating long range SSTO, and to test its metal I would be assembling spinning space station in orbit around MAN. Something that resembles artificial gravity cycler from stowaway film. And as a final part for this video, we will explore real science behind rotating bodies and artificial gravity. This time around the SSTO would be done in a form factor of a space plane. And I will be talking through some assembly creation as well as the main mission reports. I will cover assembly tips and tricks, so if you play on console you can create similar design. And as always, I am sharing this craft for everyone else. Main requirement for this space plane were a long cargo bay and ability to deliver 40 to 50 ton payloads to MAN orbit. Unlike my other designs, this is a pure space vessel. It does not land on space rocks and it does not carry refinery to refuel, so everything needs to be a package deal on a KC runway. On the station part, it will be something rather simple. Rotation would be achieved through engine torque around common center of mass. On the one side we will have a crew quarters, on the other side station will have engine block as a counterweight. Right in the middle we have a docking module with some comms and solar panels. Center point on a spinning station is pretty natural placement for a sensitive equipment. When station spins to achieve gravity for habitation modules, center of station rotates relatively slowly. This way equipment experience minimizes torque and docking port always stays in a relatively stationary place if you approach station perpendicular. Yeah, I just wanted an excuse to dock interstellar style to a spinning station. Bear in mind, this station building SSTO is a totally legit and very capable design, but well, space station is rather experimental and I will be uncovering some interesting things during this video. And as all space things, I need to give this space vessel a quirky name. So welcome, space plane launcher for interplanetary cargo and kerbals, or simply short, SLEEK. Ah, so slick with all these names. This channel already featured several vessels with following cringe names. ASS, Lame, Sauce and Stinks. Now name is set and without further ado, let's go for assembly of a space plane. First we start with the two cargo bays, then add 3.75 meter fairing with matching nose cone. This weight rack of the fairing is reduced in half and keep it in line with ordinary Mark III fuel tanks. In this fashion one can achieve custom shapes with vanilla parts. Fuel tanks are added from the side and bow and stern have equal amount of fuel tanks to make craft more stable and balanced at any point of the mission. As the base for nuclear engines use engine plate. To have attachment point we can use small truss parts. Heat sinks are added to truss part first and then add nuclear engines itself. First part to transfer heat is always attachment part. To give the whole construction necessary rigidity use auto strut setting from advanced tweakables. Also for engines itself I prefer to set rigid attachment on to reduce unnecessary flex under engine thrust. As for the fairing one cannot complete it over nuclear engines, so we need to offset engines first. To finish fairing construction with open end just press left alt with right mouse button. To offset engine weight on the stern, add utility and crew quarters to bow of the craft. That includes reaction control wheels, batteries, crew quarters, docking port, comms and even mobile lab. Since this is station building SSO, one can add cargo storage to carry extra parts for EVA construction. One of the crew modules is sticking inside of the cargo bay to expose crew hatch for EVA activity. In the front of cargo bay I prefer to use normal docking port, while at the back something big as cargo attachment point. Here I had a bizarre idea to balance craft perfectly with some extra engine mass on the front, but honestly it does not look really great, so craft would be not perfectly balanced, just reasonably balanced. For the engine nacelles I just use ordinary Mark II fuel tanks. Rotating them 45 degree give that awesome look. Then I do clip enough rapier engines for the mass of this craft. Yes it have benefits in terms of reduce aerodynamic drag, but I do it for the visual looks most of the time. Wing construction is pretty straightforward. I want to have center of lead behind center of mass, well, as usual for any plane, and I use one swept wing as the base for the main wing and add everything on the single root part of this first swept wing. This allows me to adjust the whole wing angle later. The whole wing is rotated, so when the craft is pointing prograde, with minimal drag on the fuselage, it still tends to gain vertical speed from the wing lift. To shift center of lift way back I prefer to use those shuttle tail fins with some extra wings. And from this point everything is pretty straightforward. Just add landing gear, some aero brakes, lights, RCS and action groups. 
So the first launch was the full 45 ton payload launch. This is a STO specifically designed to fly pretty much hands off. First it needs to lift off, then to reach the speed of 300 meters per second. This is achieved with the angle of attack at around 5 degrees. At this point one can just adopt 0 degree angle of attack with stability assist on and craft will just fly itself. Pretty important note that cargo base can load incorrectly and craft will fail to break sound barrier. As a good indicator I'm using solar panels inside of the cargo bay. If it breaks during liftoff, then cargo bay did not load correctly and you need to reload craft from the hangar bay. At the altitude of 8 km, air is thin enough to have more than two thirds of nuclear engine thrust. This allowed to push the SSTO speed beyond 1.2 km per second, even while below 30 km altitude. At altitude around 25 to 30 km, it is time to swap to closed cycle rapier engines. Nacelles are a bit lower than center of mass or central axis of the craft. With this design feature, craft will always try to push nose up under the engine thrust. This allows to gain extra vertical speed hands off. Leave some oxidizer in tanks since this craft do not have any monopropellant and rely on Vernier engine RCS. Once out of oxidizer, it is all up nuclear engines to do the final part of orbital injection. If everything is done correctly, even with the heaviest payload, craft will never lose altitude and achieve orbit with around 2.5 k delta V left. This is more than enough to deliver payload to man orbit and return back to Kerbin. First payload was engine block with one of the habitation modules. Return from the man orbit is super easy. Thanks to powerful RCS engines, craft can aggressively point SAS at radial out. After the first IR break, it is time to adjust orbit for the precise landing at KSC. Actually managed to lose my IR brakes during the re-entry, but it is not a big deal. Just need to pay more attention next time. Since it was my like first landing, I was a bit too aggressive on maneuvers, just to determine how much stress this plane can withstand. And yeah, Mach 3 maneuvers is not what you want to do with this craft in the denser part of atmosphere. Also you can notice that after the quick save, cargo base did not load correctly, so the solar panels broke, and cargo base are kinda acting as a actual big aero brake, so even if your cargo base do load correctly, you still can open them and use them as aero brake. Hey, it's bizarre and weird, but you know, KSP is a bizarre and weird game. Uh, the actual touchdown is pretty normal, just need to tweak my brakes and set up the bow landing gear correctly. And I just managed to make a cliche stop on the edge of the cliff. Let's hope that there is like no pigeons around to land on the nose of the craft and shift center of mass just to like just a tiny bit to like flip it over. <laughs> All right. The rest of the station is constructed in three launches. One carry full 45 ton payload and two other are pretty light at 20 to 30 tons. Pretty much the same ascent profile as the first time and the full payload is relatively close while lighter ones are way more relaxed when it comes to achieving orbital injection. When craft start close cycle with a light payload, one can climb way more aggressive achieving orbital injection sooner. Man burns and orbital injections are as mundane as it gets. Station is built at around 200-ish km altitude and 200-ish, maybe a word, maybe not, I have no idea, just modifying English language to my liking. <laughs> Alright, tricky part is to do the rendezvous fast. The actual trick is very simple. Just target the station and aim for like for 2 to 1 orbital resonance for man orbital injection burn. From here it is very easy to do like direct intercept and relative velocity to kill is very low at 30 to 40 meters per second. And now everything is delivered to the station, we need to assemble it, but before that we need to return our SSTOs and after that we will talk about the hard science stuff for this spinny spinny station. Returns to Kerbin were a mixed bag. One of the air brakes was like direct man orbit to direct KC runway and landings on a runway, well, well, they can be way more accurate. Usually need like to be way more accurate and align your runway approach from far away. Good control and atmosphere allow for very sloppy approach and well, after first exemplar landing, I went for a falling rock strategy. And kind of, kind of landed and wanted to brag about how a good landing is the landing that you can walk away. But nevertheless, I managed to hit one of the lights in the end of the runway, and I also managed to screw my quick save. So yeah, rip those carols. <laughs> yeah. And the last landing was like landing with 95% of the craft still intact. So yeah, need to be more accurate even with a good glider. So SSTOs are kind of back for the most part, even if they are back in more parts than they left from the runway, but whatever. Uh, what about the space station? So the first step was to assemble main habitation module with two extra small modules. 
Station tag or engine block is already conveniently attached to one of the smaller habitation modules. In this manner, it's simply one simple dock to main habitation module. After that, SSTO deploys second small module and attach it to the frontal docking port. And from there, it is another simple docking to a space station. Third mission delivered all three thrust sections. And to be honest, it took quite some time to put everything together. RCS is not very reliant when it comes to moving payloads with offset center of mass. So instead of that, I'm using single nuclear engine and reaction control wheels instead of RCS. Coupled with simple time warp, it allowed to align things way easier and in more predictable fashion. For the thrust section, I'm using dual docking ports to achieve that extra rigidity of construction. At this point, station was almost functional, but I still wanted some extra things to test. Final payload is center point module and final habitation module. First I attach final habitation module to a station with STO itself, and then once again use engine tuck to rearrange station modules. And just docking modules around was not the final part of station reconstruction. To give it a bit more realistic feel, I just attached several struts on EVA, and now it have this awesome look. So as I can notice, the station itself is a bit asymmetrical, and this is a legit way to do a spin gravity. You need to have maximum gravity in habitation modules, while everything else can experience like any level of gravity. Engine block can be way heavier. So having 2 to 1 thrust length was the initial idea for this project. Unfortunate reality with this config is that once fuel is depleted, center of mass will inevitably shift. One can put majority of fuel near the center of mass, but even then it will still shift with the fuel consumption. So now you can see from this docking attempt, actually a successful docking attempt, rotation of the station center of mass is not perfect and I just barely used any fuel, so it's already shifted. Still kind of doable, especially if you are using reaction control wheels and RCS and kind of good pilot. But main issue with this layout is docking of landers and transfer crafts to a spinning station. Kerbal Space Program is actually quite accurate when it comes to simulation of spinning things with offset center of mass. So when you add extra mass to the side of the spinning station, it will start to make 180 degree flips on its rotational axis every several revolutions. And this is the real deal. This instability is also known as Genebekov effect after the Soviet cosmonaut Vladimir Genebekov, who discovered this effect on the Mir space station in 1985. And even if you have two similar mass crafts docked to the center of main stationary axis, Genebekov effect is still a thing. It will still happen 100% of the time. The tricky part is that in some inclinations, instability flip coincides with the rotational speed of the station, and it looks actually stationary from the rotational axis of the station. Just like with the tidally locked moons that are actually rotating on their axis at the same speed as their orbit around parent planet, uh, you could not see the Nebekov effect with the naked eye, but it's still there, and well, once you start to shift center of mass by docking and undocking crafts, everything will just go out of the window, and will start doing severe case of Genevieve effect. And naturally, like, centrifugal force will just rip apart space station and experience this instability. So in reality, this layout with center point docking will just not work. So you need to dock your spacecraft directly to habitation part of the space station. But this obviously requires you to stop the rotation of space station for the duration of docking procedures. So the good question is, why even bother with artificial gravity on the orbit of the closest celestial body to the home planet? Actually, we as a human species do not even know correct answer to the problems of gravity and a human body. We know that no gravity is a bad amount of gravity. But how much gravity is a good enough gravity? We have no idea. Is it half? Maybe Mars like one third is alright? Or maybe it is logical 1G, no more, no less. On the higher end of gravity, we know that constant 5G is just too much for a human heart. But outside of several days on Moon, we have no data on a low gravity. We know that 15% gravity is enough for your inner ear to work properly. So 17% gravity of the Moon is enough to know where is up and down. But even then, Apollo astronauts were tipping over quite often. Until we do prolonged testing on humans, we simply doesn't know an answer to a long-term biological needs of human body. Just like with laser surgery on ice. There was a logical chance of Richard Garriott's ice exploding when he went to an orbit. He was the first human in space with laser surgery on ice. Well, spoiler alert, his ice did not explode. And now people can go into space with surgically altered eyesight. But speaking of gravity, 
We have no idea how prolonged exposure to a low gravity will play out for our biology. It would be problematic to make a long-term basis and settlements on Luna if it is bad to stay for a long time in 17% gravity. Rotating people back to Earth ever so often is quite expensive. What if we can build a space station with artificial gravity in the lunar orbit? This way crew rotation only need to exchange people between moon surface and orbital station. And while big rotation stations are just like quite out of reach of our current level of space industry development, something that works like a centrifuge is way easier to construct and maintain. So one more lesson learned. And I'm honestly surprised that even a decade into KSP I still learned some new and very basic things about space. So naturally I'm working on more space things on this channel, and in particular I'm making a video about one of those like space plane prototypes that was predating Buran. And you want to know more? Just hit subscribe. And this is the end of this video. Goodbye, comrade.